Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is our uh, <coughs> programmable uh, single clap or double clap relay driver clapper. <coughs> By using an onboard jumper, you can uh, configure it on a power up to be single clap toggle or double clap toggle. Now, at the end of the video, after we've put this together, you'll be able to see a demonstration. If you want to see a demonstration now, skip to the end of the video. But uh, I'm going to talk, to talk about what comes with the kit. We're going to put one together to, uh, in this video. So, custom PCB, two ceramic 0.1 microfarad capacitors, a 8-pin dip socket, programmed uh, microcontroller, um, a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a 1K ohm resistor, two 10K ohm resistors, a 470 uh, ohm resistor, two terminal blocks, one 3-prong, one 2-prong, 7805 5 volt regulator, a uh, a three pin header, a little mini electric microphone, a two N two 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 transistor NPN, a diode, three millimeter red LED, and a uh, a uh, two pin header connector. And if I didn't mention it, five volt relay. So first of all, we're going to plug plug in our uh, or rather solder in our resistors. They're labeled on the board. Uh, R four is labeled ten K R four. So place one of your two 10K ohm resistors here. R3 is labeled 1K, R3, so place your single 1K resistor there. R2 is labeled R2, 10K, so place your other 10K ohm resistor there. And R1 is labeled 470R, R1, 470R for 470 ohms. So place your uh, soldering your single 470 ohm resistor there. Uh, there's no polarity on resistors, so don't worry about that. Just make sure the right values are in the right places. Next, we will do our LED our diode and our capacitors. First of all the capacitors, we get two ceramic capacitors that are beige in color and they are placed in the C1 slot labeled C1 0.1U and uh, the uh, C2 slot labeled 0.1U C2. Uh, they're not polarized, you can place them in uh, either way, there's no specific orientation, just make sure that they're placed in those two slots. Uh, your electrolytic capacitor, your 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor goes in the C4 slot right here, labeled C4100U. Uh, you'll notice that there is a long lead and a short lead. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative. The On the bottom pin here from this perspective, there's a little tiny uh, positive sign, a little plus sign. That's an indicator of your positive. So place your long lead in the bottom hole here with the plus sign to the left of it, and your short lead in the top hole from this perspective. If you turn that around, you power it on, you'll pop it. So be very, very careful. Your diode <coughs> has two sides to it. There is a white stripe on one side and there is black on the other. On the D1 uh, footprint, it's labeled D1 uh, and there is a, um, it's labeled 1N4004 as well. So there is a white stripe on the bottom side of the footprint. Make sure that from a bird's eye view that the, the white stripe on the diode is facing the lower hole here from this perspective with the white stripe on it and that your black lead, the black side, is facing the uh, three resistors here. Make sure that you don't turn that around or as soon as your relay activates you'll have a short circuit and your device will reset. <clears throat> very very important. Now your LED, three millimeter red LED, goes in the LED1 slot. LED has a long lead and a short lead as well. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative. Your your uh, positive lead goes on the left from this perspective, and your short lead, your negative lead, goes to the right, which is actually where it says LED1. Remember, short lead on the right, long lead on the left. Don't turn that around, or else your LED will not function. The rest of the circuit will function, but the LED will not function. That's an indicator LED to tell you when the relay is on, because when you clap, you can't actually hear the relay click. So next, after you've soldered those into place, making sure that there's no shorting, we will do our uh, microphone, uh, our 3-pin header, and our transistor. So the microphone, this one's a little bit tricky. From the bottom, there's two pins. Uh, on one side, there is a little tiny green, uh, little tiny green marker. Uh, just like a little, little speck on one side. Uh, that is your negative lead. The side with no green spec is your positive lead. Now the mic goes right here. It's labeled the two pins are labeled mic plus and mic minus. Make sure that the uh, lead, the, the green, the, the the side, the lead with the little green indicator goes in the mic minus uh, pin or, or hole, and that the uh, other pin goes in the mic plus hole. Now what you might want to do is actually add solder to the pads and uh, just bend the leads out a little bit 
and solder them in without actually pushing it into the holes. You can do it as you want, but don't apply too much heat or else you'll hurt the mic. Uh, so just be very careful when you solder that into place. Your three pin header goes right here. There's a three pin header hole labeled one, two, and three. We'll get to what those mean later. Solder those in with the short leads in the PCB so that the long leads are facing up. And your two pin header connector can plug on to the, either the left two or right two, or rather one and two or two or three, just for the time being so that you don't lose it because it's a very small component. Your transistor, your 2N2222, there is a curved side and there's a flat side. The flat side has writing on it and the curved side is, right now it's on its back, so as you can see it's moving around a little bit. And that goes in the T1 slot labeled T12N2222. And on the footprint there is a flat side and a curved side. From a bird's eye view, make sure that the curved side of the transistor is facing the curved side of the footprint and that the flat side with writing on it is facing the flat side of the uh, footprint. If you reverse that, you're going to know pretty quickly because your transistor will not drive the relay. So make sure when you solder these in that there's no shorts. Uh, make sure the orientations are correct. In our next step, we will do our socket, our two terminal blocks, and our 7805. Okay, the two terminal blocks are easy. The two terminal blocks have a terminal side and a plastic side. Make sure that the terminal blocks are placed with the terminal sides facing outside of the board, not inside. Uh, if you turn those around, you're not going to be able to uh, make your connections easily. So, terminals facing out in both cases. For example, terminal faces out. Uh, the 7805 5 volt regulator has a black side with writing on it. That's the front, and the black is, or the back is just ground. It's uh, whitish gray. The footprint 7805 right here has a white stripe on the back. Make sure that the ground side is facing the back, the white stripe on the footprint, and that the, the black side with the writing on it is facing the front. Uh, make sure it's flush to the board. Make sure that there are no shorts. Lastly our socket and our IC. I shouldn't say lastly, lastly for this step. The uh, the footprint is labeled PIC10F222 and there's a notch on the left hand side of the footprint. There is a notch on the left hand side of the socket there is a notch on the left side of the IC. From our bird's eye view from this perspective uh, then place make sure that you line up the notches from a bird's eye view so the notches are facing the left from this perspective if you power it up and you have your uh, your chip placed backwards you'll fry it instantly so be very very careful of that make sure that when you're soldering in your socket that there are no shorts it's very easy to short so be very careful use a nice fine tipped iron once we're done that we will do our relay and then we will power it on the relay you can't really screw up there's three pins on the left two pins on the right. Uh, on the board there are three pins on one side, two on the other. It literally just falls into place. Make sure it's flush to the board. Make sure each uh, pad has a fair amount of, a healthy amount of soldering on it. Uh, once we're done, uh, what you can do is there are three output pins of the, of the relay. N-O-C-O-N-N-C. -N -N By default when the relay is off, the C-O pin, the common pin, is connected to the N-C pin, which is normally closed. So those are essentially shorting inside. So uh, when the relay is activated, the common pin disconnects from the normally closed pin and connects to the normally open pin, which is NO. So basically, if you wanted to control an AC device such as a lamp or something to that end, what you could do is you could open up the, uh, the power cord, cut the hot wire, which is uh, the black wire, strip off the insulation, place one end to, into the common pin, screw down the terminal block, uh, take the other severed wire, strip off the insulation, place it in the normally open uh, pin to the terminal block and then once you depending on which mode you're in you go and it'll turn on your lamp because it'll reconnect that hot wire the, that uh, black wire that you uh, you severed through the relay and when you clap off again uh, it will disconnect it will the common pin will connect back to the normally closed pin and it will disconnect the hot wire so hopefully that makes sense um, we're going to solder this in place. We're going to put uh, our power supply on it. Recommended voltage is uh, 7 to 9 volts. You can put 12 on it, but th with the relay on, the regulator will get kind of hot after a little while because it's dissipating a lot of power. Uh, recommended 7 to 9 volts. If you want, let me know. I, I can sell you a 9 volt wall, uh, wall transformer for uh, uh, 6 bucks. So let me know. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's solder it together and power it on. As you can see, I've placed uh, uh, orange wire for positive. Uh, it's labeled V plus on the board, the left terminal pin for 7 to 9 volts positive, and the right pin is labeled G and D for ground. 
uh, and I've got uh, right now I've got nine volts on it. So if you use a your two-pin header connector to short pins one and two labeled on the board, you'll be in double clap mode. Now, if I unplug power and I take the header pin connector off and place it on pins two and three, and I power it back on. There you go. So if you're interested, it'll be available at engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com. Uh, I'll have it up in a couple days. There are four mounting holes, one in each corner, so that you can actually mount this to a fixture uh, should you want to control, say, a lamp with it. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you purchase it, I hope you follow along with this and have no problems. Take care, everyone.